Hello edXL students, it's the big one. We're talking the 25 mark question in paper one and paper two specifically. This question is an evaluate question. We look at the mark breakdown, 16 marks now for knowledge application and analysis. Um, so 16 marks basically for your depth of analysis marked in levels, nine marks for evaluation, again, marked in levels. But we are specifically focusing on the 25 marker in paper one and paper two only, this will come in section C, meaning your extracts are finished. The extracts don't apply to your 25 marker. Your own real world examples are very much expected instead. But also note that in section C of paper one and paper two, there'll be two 25 markers. You just need to pick one of those two. So one of those two in paper one, one of those two in paper two, that's it. Uh, you have to pick the one that suits you the best pick the one that you feel you can write in the most detail in, okay? That's what you're doing to maximize your mark overall. The paper three 25 marker is quite unique. It will say evaluate or discuss micro and macro effects. So it's slightly different. I've got a separate video, the one after this, to cover that. We are focusing on the paper one and paper two 25 marker. In terms of timing, you're hopefully going to have 35 minutes to write this 25 marker. That's all about how your previous time management has gone. If it's gone really well, 35 minutes. Worst case scenario though, no less than 30 minutes time management here. So yep, it's a long essay, the longest one you're gonna have to write in your exam papers, marked very much in level, so depth of writing is crucial for examiners. Uh, there are two styles of 25 mark. You can get one that says evaluate one policy or one thing, basically the pros and cons of one policy or one thing. That's quite an easy style, but so is the second one. The second style might say evaluate multiple policies or evaluate multiple things. For, for example, evaluate the benefits of something, the costs of something, the macro effects of something. Maybe evaluate the causes of something, right? Multiple things there. Uh, what you're gonna see later is that it doesn't matter what the style is, your structure is always gonna be the same. Bear in mind though, that you don't have extracts here in paper one and paper two for the 25. Your own real world examples are absolutely crucial and very, very much expected. Often the 25 marker in paper one will say using an industry of your choice or, or using a market of your choice. In paper two, using a developing country of your choice or using a developed country of your choice. So yeah, the examiners are making it explicit in the question that you need to have good, good real world examples to apply to in this essay. Now, luckily for you guys, I have a book covering real world examples for everything in the course. So you can simply get this book as a shortcut to make sure you've got real world examples for everything in micro and macro. And this book isn't just stats of stuff because that isn't very helpful a lot of the time. It's detailed case studies. So very easy from this book to then make sure you can apply in a 25 marker with real world examples. So a simple way of getting your examples is getting this book. If not, you've got to research on your own and make sure you've got your own real world examples for everything in the course. It's super expected and wanted by examiners on this 25 marker. Okay, so now to the structure. As always, remember with edXL, it's not the number of points you make that matters, it's the depth of writing. So here's the structure that I recommend you follow. You start by defining key terms, key terms that are in the question, get those definitions in, and then you're looking to write two analysis paragraphs. So analysis paragraph one, and later in the essay, analysis paragraph two. Now, in your analysis, it's crucial that you're writing depth. Remember, this is you writing knowledge of economic theory. You're writing depth of explanation. That is absolutely fundamental given that there are 16 marks in total for how well you can write depth of analysis. Now, I have a writing skills video where I guide you of how to write the perfect analysis paragraph in economics. It's linked over here. Make sure you check that out. There are gonna be a few complimentary writing skills videos alongside this structure. You need to watch them all to make sure you know what you're doing. But depth of analysis is fundamental. You're doing that. You're looking to apply with your own real world example. We know how important that is. The way you do that is not lumping it right at the start of the paragraph or right at the end, you know, at the end. By the way, what example of this is? No, 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 that's not, not what examiners are looking for. Your application, your example, needs to be integrated within your analysis. So you write something in your analysis and you think, well, does my example back this up? You know, is my example relevant to what I've just said? In which case you write it there. So very much integrated within your paragraph, within your analysis. And as always with economics essays, when you're writing paragraphs, you're always thinking, right? Is there a diagram that's relevant here? Is there a diagram that illustrates what I'm writing? If the answer is yes, you draw your diagram, but make sure your diagram is drawn nice and big. 
make sure everything on the diagram is labeled, make sure it's accurate if you're shifting things, it's an accurate shift, and make sure fundamentally that you're referring to your diagram in your writing. So if there's a shift of a curve, refer to it, D1 to D2 maybe, or AD1 to AD2. Any action on the axis, P1 to P2, or in a macro ADAS diagram, Y1 to Y2, whatever it is that's relevant, refer to it in your writing, that way you're using the diagram and explain things that are happening on the diagram, right? Your diagram is very much a complement. It's a help in your analysis. So make sure you're actually talking about it, then you get full credit for your diagram. But you're always just thinking, is there a diagram that's relevant? If the answer is yes, draw it. If the answer is no, then don't worry about it. So there's your analysis. That's how you do it. You do that a second time later. What's unique on this 25 marker is that after each of your analysis paragraphs, you must evaluate. So overall, two evaluation paragraphs, one that follows analysis one, one that follows analysis two. So now, can you see how the structure fits no matter what the style of the question is? So the question says evaluate one policy or one thing. Analysis one, basically pro. Analysis two is your con, right? Pro con style. Uh, and that's how you develop your analysis there. But if the question is evaluate multiple policies or multiple things, well, analysis one is policy one, analysis two is policy two, and you develop in full detail. If it's multiple things, um, evaluate benefits or costs or causes. Analysis one is benefit one or cause one. Analysis two is cause two or benefit two, and you develop fully. So the structure is really good in that sense. But yeah, after each analysis paragraph, you must evaluate. And again, the crucial word here is depth. It needs to be in a paragraph, not stated, not in a few sentences, but developed in full detail, full depth. And again, this is hard to do. It's hard even to know what evaluation is in economics. So again, there is a writing skills video where I cover how to evaluate in beautiful depth. Again, it's linked over there, but all these writing skills are gonna be linked in the description to this video, so you can get them there as well. But yeah, that video covers the different ways you can evaluate in economics, how to write in depth, how to make sure you can get the full marks for evaluations. So you've got to make sure you watch that. But depth of evaluation is crucial. You make your point and you develop it fully is what you're thinking in your head. Again, you want to integrate within your evaluation paragraph your real world example that can back you up. And again, as always, you're thinking, is there a diagram that illustrates what I'm writing? If yes, you can draw it. If no, then don't worry about it. So you have evaluation one following analysis one, evaluation two following analysis two. That is the heart of your essay. But then you must finish your 25 marker with one final judgment paragraph. Examiners call this a conclusion. Most people call it a conclusion, but I like the term final judgment because that's what this paragraph is. It's your overall answer to the question. So many marks are reserved for how this paragraph goes. If the rest of the essay is done really well, this paragraph will determine whether you get full marks or you're a bit away from full marks. So I have another writing skills video here that covers how to write the perfect final judgment. This is a tricky one, but I give you a nice guideline in there to answer the question, to justify, to balance, and I guide you with what exactly you're trying to do in all those components. So watch that video out. Everything you need to, to nail the final judgment is in there and then you're set with your full 25 mark. You know not just what the structure is, but you also know all the specific skills required in that structure and how to do it perfectly when it comes to writing the essay yourself. So that, guys, is a 25 marker. Hopefully you feel pretty confident after watching this video, but especially after watching the writing skills videos as well that go with this structure. Where there are black stars, that's where there are specific writing skills videos to guide you in more detail. So you must have watched those alongside, but that's a 25 marker. Crucially, just in paper one and paper two, stay tuned for the next video where we're gonna look at the 25 marker in paper three. Can't wait to see you then. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.